I thank you that you again allow us to come before your word, your promise. I pray that in this short time that you would work by your spirit, give us wisdom and understanding into your word, that we may hold on to it as our promise. Simply be people who enjoy the recipients, partakers of the amazing promises you have given to us in Christ. Again, I pray that you alone would see is week three. Prayer is required in our walk of faith. Prayer is required in our walk of faith. And that's Philemon chapter one, verse four. I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers. So, before we get into the main theme, I wanted to again ask, well, if prayer is that important, then what is prayer? verses that describe how we should pray in the Bible, but before saying how we should pray, then why should we pray? What is prayer to us? Is it simply something we do because we want to get the most points on the life of the evangelist, get a good prize? I mean, not that that's bad. <laughs> Got to get good points. Good prizes, but is prayer an obligation? Something you feel that if you don't do, you're going to face difficulties, and you do because of that? Um, personally, I cannot say that I'm perfect and that I enjoy prayer 24 hours a day. I can say that these days I feel it is simply enjoyment. Enjoyment of the relationship we already have with God. Or enjoyment of the promises that we have with God. If you look at um, Ephesians 6.18, we looked at another verse before, but in Ephesians 6.18, Paul says to the church in Ephesus, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Now, again, God would not say, pray always if it's something we could not do. He's not going to tell you to do something that's impossible. But yet, the Holy Spirit, through Paul, is telling the church to pray always. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18, we looked at this verse before. And in that verse, it says that literally... Praying unceasingly is the will of God. Uh, that may be quite burdening. I think, dang, I have to pray all day long. Uh, I don't think God is trying to say that either. He's saying He's giving you everything. And the way you unlock it is through prayer. The way that you enjoy what you already have in Christ is prayer. And 
because of that, there's many different types of prayer. I mean, there's times where you sit down and you meditate on the Word. There's times when you simply converse with God. There's times when you have trouble when you, when you fast and you concentrate on God trying to get that answer. I mean, according to your situation, But again, I don't believe that God is saying this because He's wanting us to do something that we can't do or that we don't want to do. Prayer is so much more than that. Prayer, again, I'd like to emphasize this, is simply enjoying. If you don't enjoy prayer, then in my definition, that is not prayer. That's an obligation that you're forcing yourself to do something. It's like um, maybe you have parents. I'm sure you all do. But because you've always lived with your parents, it's very easy to talk to them. It's not something you have to force. If you have something to say to your parents, in most cases you will say it, right? It's a relationship. It goes back and forth. And the same thing with God. Prayer is not something that is difficult. It's You can be honest before God. You can tell Him what's on your heart. That's why it's a relationship. And it's also, it works two ways. When you pray sincerely to God, when you let God know what's on your heart, he also, through the Spirit, through the Word, will touch your heart also. Because it's, it, that's why it's a relationship. It goes both ways. God's promise is that He's going to answer us. But if we don't pray, we'll never enjoy that. And again, I guess, maybe we don't pray for the sole sake of getting answers. Not that getting answers is bad, but it's a promise. And how should we pray? I'm sure you guys know this better. Anybody know how we should pray? Christ, the name of Jesus. And well, there's many verses for this, but I'll just go through a couple. In John 14, 13, and 14, it, it, it says, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. The thing is that you have to ask in that name, and when you do ask in that name, he will do it. Again, in 16.24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy full. So if we ask in the name of Jesus, basically that means we're going to get answers. And according to the word, it's like if you don't know what the promise of God is, it's very hard to receive it when you pray. Uh, it's just like you get a job, and you have a contract, but 
don't read your contract and you don't know what benefits you get, what options there are, it may be difficult to enjoy that. Same thing with prayer. God has made promises to us in the Word. And we have those promises because we are in Christ. They're already our promises. And if you don't know what that promise says, then it may be very difficult to enjoy that in prayer. And again, there are many, but I'm just going to take a few verses. John 57. says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So basically, Jesus himself says, if you hold on to the word, you keep that word in your heart, and that becomes your promise, right? you hold on to it, you pray, you'll get whatever you ask for, even what you desire. There are other verses where we say God desires to give, or longs to give us the desires of our hearts. But even here you see that this verse itself is uh, the way we give glory to God. By receiving answers to prayer, by getting what we desire, we glorify God. Also, it's faith. Here you see Jesus again talking to his disciples. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Notice he says, when you pray, believe you received it, and you will have it. So the order is not, one day I might get something, it's you believe because the word promises it, you know you already have it, you believe that and Praise God for it, or whichever way. And God gives it to you. We unlock that through faith. And you can see this again if you look at James chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let that man not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Basically, it says that if you have doubt, even a little bit of doubt, you're not going to get anything. The Word of God says we are to pray in faith. Believing that he will answer. Why? Because God is a God that keeps his promise. We don't believe just because 
someone else tells us. The Word of God tells us that when God gives a promise, He fulfills it. And He will. So when we pray, even for personal things, for personal needs or wants, find what the promise of God says, holding on to that in faith, you believe you received it, you ask God for it, and then He gives it to you. However, you look at this verse, a person who doubts even a little bit, he says, let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. It's kind of a scary thought. But I'm not saying this to discourage you. You may be thinking, oh, maybe I don't have enough faith to pray. I'm going to stop praying. That's not what I mean. And yes, that's what Satan will want you to think. Everybody has been given a measure of faith. The moment you believe, you're a believer. Right? You're not a doubter. Right? Everybody's a believer. It means you believe something. It means you, if you're going to believe something, you have faith. And the Word of God says, if you look at Mark chapter 9, verse 23, it says, All things are possible for those who believe. Not just receiving simple answers to prayer, but all things are possible according to your faith. But here, I've even seen in the Bible, I think it's First Thessalonians, where Paul says that your faith grows exceedingly. It means faith grows. You start out small things, but as your faith grows, you can ask for bigger and bigger things. And here's a, a good example. I've heard a story of George Mueller. You've probably heard the guy. And every once in a while, a pastor talks about him at the orphanage and his prayer. When he first started out, it was very difficult for him to believe in order to get a dollar. But 50 years later, it was easier for him to believe to get a million dollars than to get the one dollar first started out. His faith grows. I mean, if now you feel, well, I'm going to ask God for a thousand dollars, and you don't get it, don't be discouraged. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, because that's the enemy. He wants you to give up. You know what you need, you know what you want, you find the promise of God, and it doesn't just have to be money. That was just an example, but you're praying for your personal issues, or you're praying for your families, or for your friends to be saved. Whatever that is, you find the promise of God in, in faith, according to your faith. You give confession of faith. And then you'll see God work. Because that's God's promise. Remember it said in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and then what? One day, somewhere over the rainbow, you might get it. He says, and you will have them. Maybe. Sometimes. If God, if it's God's will. Not that it's not God's will. But I think a lot of people use that firm term, if it's God's will. And it becomes sort of a bad thing. Because you're basically saying, well, maybe it's not God's will. And you're basically saying, I'm not going to get that blessing. What does the word say? Does it say, if it's God's will in that verse? It doesn't. It says, you will get them. Why? Because that's God's promise. To who? To those who are in Christ. 
to those people who pray in the name of Christ. Holding on to God's promise of faith. You get even what you desire. Why? Because that's what God desires. God is an all-powerful God with unlimited love. And what I've seen through the promise of God, you can see that He loves us so much, He wants to give us everything. But the thing is, if we don't want to receive it, He can't give it. And that's another trick to prayer. No matter how much God wants to give you those blessings, and He does, if we don't believe we're going to get them, then He's just waiting there. and thinking, When can I bless them? I want to give them this. It's sort of like a parent who's waiting. If you have a little child, and you think one day, let's say the father, he's a martial artist or something, into kung fu, and he likes the big long sticks or something, right? And he thinks, oh, my son's going to be like me. Is he going to give him a knife when he's a little child and say, okay, practice? Probably going to wait, right? <laughs> Until that person's ready to receive that. The same thing with God. We don't have the faith to receive it. Even though God wants to give us everything, He can't. And the moment that we're in Christ, we have been become partakers of God's divine nature. Uh, we have an inheritance as co-inheritors with God and with Christ, indicating that God Himself wants to give us everything. All we have to do is enjoy that. And that's what prayer is. Enjoying it. He gave us all the promises. When we accepted Christ, those promises were fulfilled. We have them all. Now all that is left is to simply figure out what those promises are and personally enjoy them. That's, the, that's our Christian life. And it's so realistic that you can take the issues you face each and every day and find promises for that in the Word and receive answers right there. Because that's who we are. We are people that enjoy amazing identity and authority, outstanding promises in Christ. that being said, if we could just take about a minute to pray. Pray for ourselves. Uh, that God would again give us wisdom to simply enjoy the blessings that we already have received in Christ. Because He has solved all problems. And he has given us amazing promises that we could simply enjoy that uh, throughout the week. Also pray for the message that God would give the fullness of the Holy Spirit to Pastor John, that he could give the word that is needed for each and every one of us, that we need personally to hold on to and enjoy true answers this week. Take a moment to pray again for ourselves. Lord, I thank you that in Christ you have given us amazing identity and authority. That you've given us the 
this amazing method by which we can enjoy your your relationship with us through prayer. And that you promise amazing things to us. Pray that you allow this relationship to grow, that we may simply discover and enjoy all the things that you have already given to us in Christ. And if there are any problems or any obstacles that get in way of this relationship, we pray that right now, in the name of Christ, those things would be bound. And that you would bring deliverance to your people, that they can hold on to your promises, that they can enjoy those promises, stand as witnesses of the power of Christ in all areas of their life, each and every day, and give you the greatest glory. I pray again that you alone would receive all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.